This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Oh, Domingo. As for peanut butter, his whereabouts are unknown. Share. Singer, comma, actress, comma, share. You're going to get a call from Share. That was Rosie O'Donnell's phone call to me. Just a few days prior, Rosie O'Donnell had taken me backstage at Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas to meet the one of a kind superstar. When you meet someone who is not only one of the most famous people on the planet, but also famous in part for the way he or she looks and presents themselves, you kind of tend to give that person the once over. Yeah, that's right. Little freckly pale Kathleen Mary Griffin from Forest Park, Illinois is standing next to Cher, and she did not disappoint. Cher was in her full just like Jesse James getup. Blonde wig, Navajo belt, puffy shirt. You know, believe it or not, when I meet a star of this magnitude, like sometimes I'm not the obnoxious trouble starter that you may think I would be. On this night, I was happy to just sit back and observe. We sat on a cozy sectional backstage in her dressing room. I was impressed by how quickly Cher was able to go from show mode into real person mode. I know you're laughing at the idea that I just called Cher a real person, but damn it, she was relaxed and laughing and eager to chat about politics, touring, and a little showbiz gossip on the side. There's something I'm going to call the Cher factor. Not to be confused with anything resembling the Fox News Bill O'Reilly show, because Cher would hate that, which means you really can't forget that it's Cher when you're in her presence. You don't even want a reminder of Fox News, frankly. Anyway, it was a great way to meet Cher and spend time with her. But now she was going to call? Oh, God, did they say something? I asked Rosie. She said no, that Cher wanted my number because she wanted to get together. Then Rosie goes, just remember, no matter what, she's always fucking Cher. Many years into my friendship with Cher, I can tell you that Rosie was right in the best possible way. Sure enough, my phone rang, and then somebody was doing a very good Cher impression. Kathleen, this is Cher. To which I responded, um, yeah, hi, uh, Cher. Um, this is awkward. I'm too famous for you to call my cell phone directly, so would you mind having your assistant call my agent first? She laughed. <laughs> and a friendship was born. The first time Cher invited me to hang out with her and watch a movie at her house, I'm sorry, her castle, she instituted the signature share policy. Okay, so if you come over to my house, it's a no makeup and sweatpants kind of night. I don't feel like getting all done up tonight, even though I am fucking share. By the way, when you hear this, just know that my share impression is a great source of embarrassment for share. I think it's great. But anyway, to be friends with her is to know that she is going to proclaim, I'm fucking share, several times in one sit down. Ever since that first phone call, I've always been cognizant of wanting to make her giggle. I can't help it. I believe I responded with something like, well, I'm fucking Kathy fucking Griffin, fucking Cher, and I'll come over in my sweatpants fine. I just don't want you to lose your shit when you see me arrive in my very expensive and paid off Maserati without missing a beat. And this is one of my favorite things to do with Cher. She returns the volley every time. She said, oh, okay, I'll alert the staff. There's a crazy bitch named Kathleen coming over. Cher likes to call me by my baptismal name. Look, there's so much I can tell you about Cher, and I know you want to hear everything, but let's just get to my arrival in her bedroom. I mean, I can hear her now. Bitch, you did not just tell people you were taking them into my bedroom, Kathleen. But let's turn back time, shall we? There I am holding a gift bag in one hand and my phone in the other. I was left to wander her Cher Vatican-like compound, yelling, Cher, Cher, where are you? At the top of my lungs. It's me, Dorothy. I'm here to see the Wizard of Oz. All of a sudden, I hear, Kathleen, is that you? I'm up here. I walk up the stairs, and I was blinded by the reflection, bouncing off her Academy Award and Golden Globe Award on the shelf outside her bedroom door. I'm coming, I said. I just don't want the Oscar to hit me on the head on the way in. I heard, <laughs> Cher's laugh is delicious. It's a little bit of a combination of a hacking cough and involuntary exhalations of joy. I walked into her bedroom suite, which is her sanctuary and is also larger than most people's homes, and saw Cher in sweatpants and no makeup. Guess who's still very, very beautiful without makeup? Yeah, and has the body of a 25-year-old and loves a casual pair of sweatpants with a matching bedazzled lime green hoodie. Fucking Cher. 
The first thing I noticed was her hair. It's real thick, long black hair that's parted and halfway down her back.